When I was a boy each week On Sunday we would go to church and Pay attention to the priest He would read the holy word And consecrate the holy bread And everyone would kneel and bow Today the only difference is Everything is holy now Everything Everything is holy now When I was in Sunday school We would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two Jesus made the water wine And I remember feeling sad That miracles don't happen still But now I can't keep track Everything's a miracle Everything, everything Everything's a miracle Wine from water is not so small But an even better magic trick Is that anything is here at all So the challenging thing water was a rare at best I barely wet my fingertips but now I have to hold my breath like I'm swimming in the sea of it, it used to be a world half in heaven second rate hand me down but I walk it with a reverend air cause everything is holy now Not a testament that it'd be very hard to say. See another new morning come. I say it's not a sacrament. I tell you that it can't be done. This morning outside I stood and saw a little red winged bird. Shining like a burning bush Singing like a scripture verse It made me want to bow my head I remember when church let out How things have changed since then Everything is holy now Used to be a world half fair Heaven's second rate hand me down But I walk it with a reverence Everything is holy now. Welcome to the Morristown Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. We are a multi generational, spiritually alive, radically inclusive and justice-centered community. We're so glad that you are here with us. Happy Pesach, happy Passover to all who celebrate. Last night was the first night and I'll be hosting an online Passover Seder on Tuesday, March 30th at 6.30 p.m. You're invited. You can register via the link at www.muuf.org slash virtual, and you can join us on Zoom. Next Sunday is Easter, and I hope you'll be there too. We are asking you to participate in the service by recording yourself with your computer or with your smartphone in landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Please make a brief three to five second recording of you answering the question, what is blooming or what do you hope blooms? Write your answer on a piece of paper and say it out loud too. 
This makes it more accessible. It would be great if you are also holding a spring flower. It could be a live bloom, a drawing, origami, or something else. And here is an example. Singing together again, or advocating an end to gun violence, or visiting with friends. Whatever you hope to see come to life this spring. Today, our offering will be split 50-50 between our fellowship and our partner church in Shinfalva in Transylvania, which has endured many hardships. The money we send to them will be used for some badly needed repairs to their building. To our siblings in faith in Shinfalva and to our members and friends tuning in from Morris County and many spots around the country and globe, we open by affirming. It is good to be. It is good to be here. It is so good to be here together. Good morning and welcome to our community. We'll open our service today by lighting a flaming chalice. We invite you to join us by lighting a candle or a flaming chalice with us from your home too. We'll recite words written by Julianne Lepp as we light the symbol of our faith. We seek our place in the world and the answers to our heart's deepest questions. As we seek, may our hearts be open to unexpected answers. May the light of our chalice remind us that this is a community of warmth, of wisdom, and of welcoming multiple truths. Celebrating parable and story, holiness in glory, living, loving God. Hail and Hosanna, bring many names. Strong Mother God, working night and day, planning all the wonders of creation, setting each equation. At play, hail and Hosanna, strong Mother God, warm Father God, hugging every child, feeling all the strains of human living, caring and forgiving till we're reconciled. Hail and Hosanna, warm Father God. Care, calmly piercing evil's new disguises, glad of new surprises, wiser than despair. Hail and Hosanna, old aching God, young growing God, eager still to know, willing to be changed by what you've started, quick to be. Delighted, singing as you go. Hail and Hosanna, young growing God, great living God, never fully known. Joyful darkness far beyond our seeing, closer yet than breathing, everlasting home. Hail and Hosanna, great living God.
God has many names from Hide and Seek with God by Marianne Moore. Once upon a time, a girl and a boy played with each other and argued with each other. Sometimes they argued about who could swing the highest, and sometimes they argued about whose cookie was the biggest. One time, though, they were arguing about God's real name. God's real name is Mother of Us All. No, it isn't. God's real name is Father in Heaven. No, it's Mother. It is not. It's Father. I have an idea. Let's go find God and ask her what her real name is. Then we'll know for sure and you'll see that I'm right. Okay, I think that's a very good idea because when we find God, he will tell you that his real name is Father. So the boy and the girl set off to find God, even though both of them admitted they were a bit afraid to go far from home, and they might be afraid to talk to God. After they had gone some distance, they met people carrying food home from the market. Oh, we're looking for God. So that we can find out what God's real name is. One of the people said, I think if you go straight ahead down the road, you will find God but I can tell you that God's real name is the giver of life. The children thanked the people, but told them that they still wanted to talk to God themselves. The people offered the children some bread and fruit, and they continued on. They came to a river where people were fishing from a boat, and they asked them whether they could find God so that they could find out God's real name. The people told them that they would have to cross the river to find God. But one of the people said, you don't have to go across because we know God's real name. It is the hidden one. But if you still want to go on, we will give you a ride to the other side of the river. The children thanked them and crossed the river, continuing on. The boy and the girl were beginning to get tired as they approached another group of people in a grove of trees. We want to find out God's real name. Do you know where we can find God? You may find God if you go a little deeper into the forest, one of the people replied. But it isn't necessary. I can tell you God's real name. It is Protector. We still want to find out for ourselves. We'll take these blankets for your journey, the people replied. The children thanked them and traveled deeper into the forest. Night came. The boy and girl ate the bread and fruit. They lay down on the blankets to sleep. When morning came, just as the sun was peeping through the trees, they heard a kindly voice say, I understand that there are children here who want to know my real name. That's right. We We do. Are you afraid? No, are you? I'm not either. God sounds friendly. Well, what do you think my real name is? I think it's mother of all. And so it is. See, I was right. Well, I thought it was father in heaven. And so it is. See, I was right. Wait a minute. How can we both be right? And what about those people we met on our trip? who said that your name was giver of life and hidden one and protector. What about them? They are right too. But how can you have more than one real name? I mean, doesn't one of them have to be the real name, the only right name? No, I have many names. Some people say I have 99 names and some people say I have thousands of names. What are some of the 99 names? Well, giver of life, hidden one, and protector are three of them. Some others are the truth, the creator, and the loving one. And of course, the 100th name is Allah. Well, what are some of the thousands of names? Mother of all, 
Father in Heaven, Shiva, the Great Spirit, Gaia, any of these names is my real name as the person who calls me it does so with a loving heart. Well, my heart feels loving when I call you mother of all. And my heart feels loving when I call you father in heaven. Then mother of all is my real name for you. And father in heaven is my real name for you. The girl and the boy thanked God for helping them to understand. As they went home, they argued about who had been the bravest. But they didn't argue anymore about God's real name.
The first religious education class I taught as a young adult back home from college was a third and fourth grade curriculum called Holidays and Holy Days. Some of you may have taught or taken this class too. I taught that curriculum for four years, and one of my favorite memories is from the first year, on the Sunday when we invited the children to draw pictures of God. There were 24 students in that class, and their drawings and the stories they told of who God was were as varied and creative as could be. They were being raised in our tradition where we prize religious imagination and where no one imposed a box around the divine. And so before us were the uninhibited ways they perceived God to be. God was grand, glittering, and otherworldly. God was sparks emanating from the human heart. God was the earth and all her creatures. God was old, bearded, and sitting in a throne of clouds. God was a blank page, nothing, emptiness. God could not be pinned down and was a whole bunch of different pictures on a page. God was she, he, they, genderless. God was one. God was many. God was stillness. God was movement. God was far away. God was close and holding hands. Then there were also the words they shared as we went around that room, hearing about their pictures, about divinity, about their doubts and disbelief, their faith and beliefs. A couple of children shared personal memories of God. It was a holy day. I remember taking a picture with my mind's eye, thinking I may have just borne witness over the course of this hour to the closest I'll ever come to knowing God. Even after the three years I spent at Harvard Divinity School, I still felt that way about that particular day with my third and fourth grade Sunday school class. What a gift we offer one another here in our non-dogmatic, non-doctrinal religion. We are uncensored and free to express what we believe as individuals and in community. It is important to note that this is not the same as the freedom to believe whatever you want. We have seven principles and soon to be eight principles, which create the loving boundaries around our freedom. We are free to be atheists who don't believe in God, theists of many stripes who do hold belief in God, or agnostics who are open as to the existence or non-existence of God. However, it would be outside of Unitarian Universalism's communal covenant to believe in a God who chooses some for damnation and some for salvation. There is a wide spectrum of belief possible here, but the limits of love are also a part of it. In our fourth principle, we covenant to affirm and promote the free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We are responsible for holding beliefs, including beliefs about God that lead to justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, our second principle. Even with the limitations of our faith community, we are left with a wide spectrum of frameworks of meaning. You may have heard the slogan, many beliefs, one faith. One aspect of this freedom that I cherish is that as your beliefs evolve over a lifetime, you don't have to leave our fold. Your theology or religious philosophy can grow and change over your life. It also means that people coming from the same family can hold differing beliefs. We support multi-faith families and religious pluralism here. My parents used to say they valued Unitarian Universalism as a community where they could 
worship together while holding different beliefs. Or my husband, who teaches middle school science, and I are fond of saying, ours is a religion where the teachings of science and faith are both fully welcome. At the time of our founding, 65 years ago, you may well have seen Bibles and microscopes sitting side by side on the shelves in the religious education library here. Each has something to teach us about the meaning of life. There is no sacred, secular split in Unitarian Universalism. We look to find truth everywhere. No source is off limits for our religious inquiry. As our coming of age class of sixth through ninth graders and our adult class of building your own theology are currently exploring big religious questions, including about their beliefs surrounding the divine, I thought I would raise some relevant questions here in our virtual sanctuary as well. What do you believe about God or goddess or ultimate reality? How has this changed over your lifetime? Some of you may not have thought much about these questions before, so let this be an invitation to begin. Others of you may be thinking about them deeply throughout this time of a pandemic, or you may have thought about them deeply in the past. If that's the case, you might add these two questions. Does your belief or philosophy lead to greater meaning, connection, and purpose? Does what you hold as ultimate hold you in times of trouble and transition? Personally, I like to use the word God with a lowercase g to remind myself that God is not God's name, but simply the three-letter word that we use to signify what is ultimate. Today's reflection isn't about converting the atheists among us to theism. It's about all of us thinking about what we hold most sacred, what we hold above all else, and what we do believe to be ultimate. The question of what do you believe about God is one door to open, connected to that search for meaning, and not the only one. But given that 87% of the people in the United States respond yes to the question, do you believe in God? It is an important question. If you believe in God, what do you believe about God? If you don't believe in God as a person who values dialogues about faith, what do you know about the diverse understandings of God that are out there? Let me share a glimpse of the diverse theologies that Unitarian Universalists and others might subscribe to. Liberation theology is about a God who takes the side of the poor and the oppressed. This week, many of our families are engaging in Passover seders and retelling the story of the redemption of the Israelites who were once enslaved. The story of the Exodus is important to both Jews and to African Americans who see mirrored in that story and experience their own journey from bondage to liberation. Process theology views God as in a give-and-take relationship with the world. This is in contrast to the idea that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and unchanging. God is viewed less as a fixed being and more as the process of growth and becoming. God is a verb. Unitarian Universalist theologian Charles Hartshorn is a good person to read if you are curious to know more about process theology. Deism is a kind of theism we associate with a clockmaker God. Deists believe that God created the world and the natural laws of the universe and then removed himself allowing those natural forces and free will to determine what happens next. This concept stands in contrast to 
a God who intervenes in our lives. Neopaganism is about earth-centered traditions that emphasize rituals and can include gods or goddesses, plural. Pantheism equates the divine with nature. Panentheism also views the divine as part of nature as well as transcending nature. God is both imminent within us and every blade of grass and also independent and exists beyond the natural world. These are but some brief sketches of possibilities that may or may not resonate with you. The point is that when people say that three-letter word God or the six-letter word goddess, they often have very different concepts in mind. I define God as the creative healing power of love that is able to break through the suffering in our lives and in the world. I resonate with concepts of process theology and the understanding that God, with that lowercase g, is present in all and yet greater than each. Humanism, which centers human experience, wisdom, and ethical commitments, also underpins my theology. And lately, I've been reflecting more deeply on the movement from liberal religion towards liberation theology. This past week, I see God or the creative healing power of love in the activity of Georgia Representative Park Cannon knocking on the governor's door to fight voter suppression. Where are you finding examples of what is ultimate and worthy and divine? Where are you finding something you can freely follow or be guided by? You might take a page from the third and fourth graders I once taught and just try to draw something wordless and full of wonder. In the end, none of us can fully describe what is ultimate anyhow, but together we come closer, especially when we make space for our collective wisdom to shine forth. May our spiritual journeys here of seeking and finding, changing and growing, lead us to glimpse the divine in how we lead our lives and how we build community. May it be so, blessed be, and amen. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching. Marching, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Marching, we are marching in the light of God. Caminando en la luz de Dios. 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 Caminando, vamos caminando. Vamos caminando en la luz de Dios. I'm
And now in our going, may the light of love bless us and keep us. May it shine down upon us. May it radiate out from within us. May it be gracious unto us and may it grant us peace. For this is the day that you and I are given. So let us rejoice and make gladness in it. We are so glad you came today. At the end of our worship, we extinguish our chalice. We invite you to blow out your flame as we do, and we'll share words written by Elizabeth Sell Jones. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. When I was a boy each week On Sunday we would go to church and Pay attention to the priest He would read the holy word And consecrate the holy bread And everyone would kneel and bow Today the only difference is Everything is holy now Everything Everything is holy now. When I was in Sunday school, we would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two. Jesus made the water wine. And I remember feeling sad that miracles don't happen still. But now I can't keep track. Everything's a miracle Everything, everything Everything's a miracle Wine from water is not so small But an even better magic trick Is that anything is here at all So the challenging thing Water was a rare at best. I barely wet my fingertips, but now I have to hold my breath like I'm swimming in the sea of it. it used to be a world half ebb, having second rate hand me down, but I walk it with a reverent air, because everything is holy now. Not a testament that it'd be very hard to say. See another new morning come. I say it's not a sacrament. I tell you that it can't be done. This morning outside I stood and saw a little red winged bird. Shining like a burning bush Singing like a scripture verse It made me want to bow my head I remember when church let out How things have changed since then Everything is holy now Used to be a world half fair Heaven's second rate hand me down But I walk it with a reverence Everything is holy 
sound. 